one ocean. Two friends who became bitter rivals. Dive with world champion freedivers Pippin Ferreris and Umberto Pelizzari as they attempt to go deeper than anyone in history on a single breath. Ocean Men, challenge in the deep. I was good at school, actually, and I took a lot of care over my homeworks. I really made an effort, but my teacher still kept on saying, Umberto Pelizzari, you are not paying attention. Yeah, most of the time I guess my mind was on other things, completely other things. I used to imagine that I was a dolphin and I dreamt of living on the water just like they do. I wanted to dance with dolphins in a never-ending current, swim out with them into the magical blue of the sea, to places no human being had ever been before. And I knew just what I had to do to make that dream come true. What I had to do was learning how to hold my breath as long as possible. As a kid, I was the deepest diver in Ogan. Not many could swim down there where the big fish were. I was one of them who could, Pipin Ferreras. Every time Senor Morales needed an special fish for his restaurant, he came to me. Senor Morales paid very well. Sometimes the money was good enough to feed my whole family. He often used to say, Pipin, you are the greatest. 26 years later, on the coast of Cozumel in Mexico, Pippin Ferreris, 38 years of age, and meanwhile a living legend in the community of freedivers, attempts a new world record, 163 meters. Pippin focuses deeply. His normal pulse rate is 75 heartbeats per minute, in order to reach such a depth, he has to lower his pulse to 12 beats per minute. Never before in history has any man dived that deep without breathing gear. Physicians consider it unreasonable and unsafe. In their opinion, the pressure on the human body will result in the collapse of its vital organs and lead to death. A sled weighing 30 kilos will pull him down. Pippin's wife, Audrey. 
Safety divers are positioned at intervals of 10 meters. Hace una señal con la mano 5 minutos y en estos momentos se mete en el agua pipín, como si se tratase de un reloj eh, programado para eh, hacer una hazaña no. colosal, algo pues que la humanidad todavía no, has, eh, no ha presenciado antes. Eh, ha entrado en el agua y hay. Ahí lo tienen. Está. Pippin glides down at a rate of one and a half meters per second. His lung capacity is already reduced by half after only 10 meters. One hundred and sixty-three meters. Pippin triggers the air-filled balloon that pulls him up. His lungs are being compressed with the force of seventeen atmospheres. At this point, they are only the size of a fist. In estos momentos también, cómo transmitirles lo que estamos aquí. But now, the most difficult part follows because his organs are expanding again, and his body lacks oxygen especially in the lungs and brain. The final meters, where the greatest danger lies, because beyond this point, there is an extreme change in the degree of compression. On the surface, there is no cheering. Pippin Ferreris shows no more reflexes. Safety divers begin desperate rescue attempts. Five months earlier. <sighs> Umberto Pelizzari, the challenger, is training on the island of Sardinia. The six foot two, 185 pound model athlete attempts to post a new world record in another diving category. His method of diving is called constant weight, a matter for purists, since its goal is to reach the great depths without any technical help except a diving suit and flippers.
He intends to reach a depth of 80 meters. If he does so, he would break the existing world record by two meters. Like Pippin Ferreris, he is able to hold his breath for more than seven minutes. In this, he profits from his extremely large lung capacity of eight liters. For free divers, or so-called apnoa divers, mental agility is almost as important as physical fitness. Quattro. They must be able to focus solely on their heartbeat and on equalizing the pressure in their ears. They shut out their surroundings, almost like in a trance. This kind of extreme diving is always a danger to life and limb. The body focuses on its basic functions only. From about 40 meters on, the body shoots down all by itself. Since the lungs are now only the size of a fist, all the other air chambers in the body are condensed. There is no more buoyancy. Blood converges in the thoracic cavity. Eighty meters. But the most difficult part still lies ahead of him. Will his strength suffice to make it back up to the surface? Now, every meter feels like a pull-up. A new champion. Umberto, who has a degree in computer science, can live from his sport now. But fame isn't his only reason for diving. Your body gets transformed completely. Uh, the world around you is transformed too. And I think because of these two, these two conditions together, you get another man in another world, reacting in another way, and living other kind of feelings. That's what I feel. A star is born. So, we, have to make it. we have to make it specific. Yeah. Yeah. Miami. Pippin Ferreris lives in the part of town locals simply call Little Havana. He fled from his home country of Cuba in 1994. When he learns about the new constant weight record, Pippin is unimpressed because the real challenge for him and many others is still no limits. And he is the undefeated champion in this category. Off 
the shore of Miami, Pippin can pursue his passion, wreck diving. Here, he finds inspiration and feels very close to his god, Olokun. I feel like um, there's a god that, is, that lives down there in the, uh, in, in the base of the, of, of the ocean. And this is the God that protects me from what I, from what I do. When I go back there and I want to put uh, scenes together, I always try to discuss all this point of view with him. And uh, I know how powerful he is, and I know uh, how convinced he can be in order to tell me what to, yes, you should do this, or no, you, should, you shouldn't do that. At the end of the 1980s, Pippin and Umberto were still good friends. Then they were diving together, the master and his protege, two people connected by the same passion, a sport which allegedly liberates the soul. I look back to the young boy that I met 15 years ago back in Cuba. Uh, it was, it was, he was a very nice guy. When I was very young, this Cuban free diver beat everybody and established world records every year, and uh, was completely unbeaten. And for sure, I love free diving, so Pipin was somebody that. Uh, was like my idol, you know? There was some kid who asked me to, to sign a, an autograph. Uh, he went over there and, and he said, well, someday they're gonna get my, my autograph uh, signed and all that. And I said, yeah, sure, for sure, you, you will. But I didn't know how much this thing is gonna affect the relation between the, the two of us. The battle for the record is on. Two zealots, two egomaniacs, but only one can emerge victorious in this hazardous struggle. Umberto and Pippin have turned into enemies who are not on speaking terms anymore. I don't like him as a man. Today, I just ignore him.
Portofino, the day of Umberto's record 80 meters. While his team is celebrating, Umberto tops it off. In front of the running cameras, he announces an attempt to break the world record in Pippin's field of expertise. No limits. 150 meters. Everything is set to happen five days later. His friends are ecstatic, singing their favorite song, featuring the phrase, whoever refuses to dance now is a Cuban. On the day of the record attempt, the weather is worse than expected, but Umberto refuses to change his mind. Unlike Pippin, Umberto tries to ascend the final 20 to 30 meters more slowly. Champagne for the safety divers, who have to pause frequently in order to equalize the pressure in their ears. Pippin Ferreris has survived the blackout he incurred when he failed in his record attempt. And he wouldn't be Pippin if he didn't accept the challenge now and try to correct things by showing the wannabe champion who the real master is. He prepares intensely for his response. In the meantime, Umberto relaxes on Sardinia. His friends are always around him during his record attempts. His whole life revolves around diving, and his safety divers are almost like a family to him.
For Umberto, diving with the dolphins is the greatest thing in the world. He tries to imitate their style in order to somehow become one with the sea. A few months later, Cozumel, Mexico. Pippin takes the challenge one more time. 162 meters are on his mind. That would exceed Umberto's world record by an incredible 12 meters. Pippin's wife, Audrey, always has to accompany him. She is a freediver herself. The two of them met when she was writing her master's thesis on their common sport, and she interviewed the champion. The safety divers are taking up their positions in the various depths. Way down at 162 meters, there is also one safety diver waiting, in complete darkness.
is back up. But how is he doing? The reports on his condition are contradictory. In any case, Pippin isn't able to give particulars and respond coherently to questions as demanded by the rules of procedure. But the depth is confirmed, and Pippin regards himself as the new world champion. However, only Pippin's own association, the IAFD, accepts him as the champion. The widely recognized AIDA Federation refuses to acknowledge the attempt. Umberto travels to China. At the Sholin Monastery of Zhengzhou, he plans to refine his breathing technique. For the monks, breathing is the source of their energy. They try to keep their minds free of ill thoughts. Obviously, they are able to conquer even pain with their breathing and meditation technique. The master explains to Umberto that concentration is the nature of all power. Solely by concentrating, one can shift the body energy, chi, to single organs or limbs. This gives a person incredible strength and works as a shield against all kinds of pain. <laughs> On his last day in the monastery, Umberto receives the most important lesson. The wise monk tells him that energy is all around us, in every leaf, every sunbeam, and in every breath of air. A person can absorb this energy and utilize it. This way, Umberto hopes to overcome the dull pain that he feels at the bottom of the ocean when his blood is being forced through the pressed veins in his head. A time of farewell. The master gives his pupil a calligraphy. On it, he writes, persistent Shaolin practice makes perfect. Thank you. Sure, sure. Elsewhere, 
Pippin tries to ease the tension by diving with whales. And he is lucky. A family of mighty humpback whales. come true. Pippin is almost intoxicated. The whales are interacting with him. At the same time on Sardinia, Umberto has returned to his favorite spot, Capo Testa. He wants to be alone. Umberto knows that Pippin is also preparing for a new attempt on the world record. Meanwhile, his team is preparing the technical devices and the procedures. Alberto attempts to apply what he has learned from the Sholin monks to absorb the energy. Obviously, this works best on his favorite rock in the north of Sardinia. Capotesta for me is, is a magic place. It has a big and strong energy, and I start breathing. I really feel when I finish, I'm charged of energy. Again okay. and again, Umberto's team discusses every detail of the dive. They have prepared for it for weeks. In the cambio da Aria Michele, da Michele Aria, la quota di Ivano sono i soliti 80 metri, quella di Ivan ne fa 35 metri, lo sgancio lo fa Luigi e Bimbo fa il suo livello di assistenza in superficie e negli ultimi 10 metri della uscita 
Va bene. Bene. Pippin addresses his god and retreats into another world, a spiritual world. Once again, in his dreams, he is confronted by memories of his failure. Pippin Ferreris is a fighter. And as stubborn as a mule. He's determined to go through with it. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Okay? The fiber of a real man is by no by looking at how many times he fell down, but about how many times he can stand up and keep going. Cozumel, Mexico. Under the scrutiny of the judges, the rope is being measured. 163 meters. In any case, this would be a world record. Pippin is attempting it for the third time. One hundred and sixty-three meters, a depth matching the height of this forty-four-story apartment building. Pippin tries to be relaxed and laid back. Umberto's preparation lasted 10 months. At first, weightlifting, running, and swimming, followed by stationary training in a pool, then dynamic freediving, and finally, deep diving. Six to eight hours every day. Now, a new record attempt is next. Wearing contact lenses with 200 dioptries, he should be able to see better in the darkness.
Pippin and Audrey on the Bahamas. They will keep on quarreling with each other, alternately defeating and then challenging each other. The two ocean men, perhaps until the day that one of them remains at the bottom of the ocean forever. Oh no. 